Hey, stop, Capcom, your game's getting away! Oh wait, never mind, I found it. Welcome back to the second part of my look at the Devil May Cry franchise. Last time we saw a franchise going through childhood and uncovering its identity. This time the franchise has a bit of an identity crisis. Not that it's all bad, by any means. It just diverged from the path. This game right here. So DMC4 was my first Devil May Cry. I rented it. I remember disliking Nero because I just wanted to play that dude I saw in the PS2 box art years ago. So I got to Dante, played him for a couple levels, and my Xbox Red ringed. It's really hard to talk about this game for a couple of reasons. After all, uh, this game, at least last time I checked, is the Tumblr fandom's favorite and is hopefully uncontroversially, the most technically complex DMC game. So I'm a little hesitant to say my honest opinion, but hey, I dumped all over Golden Sun, so I think I can handle it. A uh, brief little note here for the uh, zero sum, zero nuance, no fun allowed people. Uh, DMC4 is very good. It is a very good game with very good graphics and a very interesting story and very good combat. It makes you feel like a demon killer 10 out of 10. Okay, so for the real review, the game starts with this punk-ass kid Nero who like, who even are you though? Apparently the developers wanted to innovate the gameplay of the franchise, explore new avenues, etc. So here we are. Nero. Nero's a pretty edgy kid, you know? He's got the coat, the hair, uh, the demon arm. Okay, and that precious little motorcycle handle on his sword hilt that he uses to rev it up. <laughs> It's so ridiculous. <laughs> and he hates church. But that's okay, because Dante's here to brain the Pope with his 45 caliber. That's not family friendly. This game starts with some strong cutscenes, and it gives me the impression that either this game was meant to be bigger or shifted a lot of its budget into making dope cutscenes. Seriously, these were absolutely stunning to watch in 2008. So the first half of the game is Nero hunting down Dante because he did a Pope kill. How does Nero compare to Dante? He's all right. Nero has one gun, one sword, and his little demon arm, so his moveset isn't too complicated. Timing combos are intact from the older games. They expanded what's possible for characters to do in the air with aerial dash attacks and uh, mid-air knockups. He's a pretty well-rounded character, but I wish he could teleport like Dante. Or Virgil. Hmm. And let's not forget the arm. He can grab enemies to do a unique attack on a number of enemies or just slam them into the dirt. And he can pull himself to enemies or reel them in. It's really fun to slam a guy away, pull him back in, and finish your combo. Lastly, Devil Trigger powers you up, etc, uh, etc. Et Nobody cares. Uh, can I ask you something real quick? Why is this game so dumb? No, no, combat's great. It's really great. Uh, if we could just throw up some footage of Virgil just... Oh my god, it's so sick. And oh, look at that move. That was pretty good, eh? No, it's the levels with these insipid little sections that I can't stand. Not all of them have dumb sections, but enough to make me remember which levels I don't want to play. It's not all in one place now. It's a bit of a meandering run through a castle, jungle, etc. There's all kinds of little complicating factors, but the game isn't take X item to Y location anymore. So instead of that, we get motherfucking gyro blades. See the gyro blades? <laughs> the very same. So what are the gyro blades? Okay, low hanging fruit, sure. But these are stupid as fuck and don't belong here. Yeah, you could have made them unintrusive and interesting, but instead, you have to push them awkwardly down a hallway and whatever. Hey, it's not a big deal. It takes a few minutes, whatever, but it's not DMC gameplay. It's not interesting. It's not fun. And worst of all, they make you push one down from the place where they go to get another one, and then you gotta push two all the way back? It, it's just sloppy, okay? It breaks your flow. But wait, I'm not done complaining yet! Hey guys, what the fuck is up with the torture room? You clear the room, go upstairs, do the grabbing dexterity puzzle, and <laughs> whoops, I fell. I think I fell five or more times in one of the playthroughs because I suck. Uh, also because the automatic lock-on isn't perfect, but that's fine. Uh, it thankfully lasts just long enough to not be fun. Of course, it's fair. The game does a ton of ball grabbing leading up to this, so it's the first actual test. But losing the respawning enemies would improve the section. And of course, the infamous dice game. I got lucky this time around and fought like one battle, but who sat down and was like, yeah, 
Yeah, this is content, guys, because at the worst, you're going to be here a while. Like it's monsters or a 30 second laser section. Super fun, dude. All right, no more pettiness. Look, the game is peppered with little time wasting sections like these. It's not that they're inherently evil. It's just that when I do them, I feel like I'm wasting my time. And that's the last thing you want in an action game. But OK, no more pettiness. Nero's cool because of his arm, right? It just blows dudes up like these annoying flying knights and these cloaked guys. Nero can also absolutely annihilate all the bosses and it's awesome. So these bosses are pretty complicated. Uh, the advanced graphics and animations and relative speed of the game makes it a little harder than the old games to predict enemy attacks at times. But overall, they're fair and fun to fight. Unlike the past games, when they get worn down, they leave a huge opening for Nero to lay down some heavy damage. And I mean, he brutalizes them. Holy shit. Most of these are pure action gaming joy to fight, and I would never criticize that. Whenever you get hit, it feels like your fault. Whenever you can't keep your combo going, it's because you need to improve. Cool. At this point, I uncomfortably started to feel like Nero might be a worthy inclusion to the franchise, so I buried that feeling and found something to nitpick. This game was confusing as hell in 2008, because lots of cutscenes just don't tell the story all that well. Uh, so first you have the revelation that the church is probably not lawful good, then Trish from the previous games is a spy in their church somehow that Nero's never met. Uh, the trope of over the head, good and evil, bad, ambivalence, moral grayness, good is strong. Uh, Nero only cares about his love interest who does nothing except be a damsel, etc. It's again a purely action game kind of story. I'm not asking for a lot still. I don't play these games for a brilliant narrative. It's fun like Resident Evil 4 was fun, you know? Like I'm not expecting Shakespeare. I fail to see the logic here. <laughs> The price to pay for power? So yeah, the cutscenes are fucking amazing and I love them to death. But that's probably why I like Dante more than Nero as a kid. He's just more fun. I said in the last video that it took Capcom a long time to find their main character because Dante has either been held back by voice acting and sound mixing. You were the first one to know about my inventions. A toned down personality. What are you doing, Granny? Or a little awkwardness in an otherwise amazing attempt. My soul is saying it wants to stop you! So the tech finally evolved enough to bring Dante out in full. I said he's the Tumblr favorite and mine for a reason. He brings this admirable energy to the cutscenes. His actions are self-aware and playful. He knows he's the strongest thing around, so he doesn't take things too seriously. He's packing at least eight inches of cock. But like the weak transition from my discussion of Nero to Dante, yeah, we're getting meta in here. DMC4 just hard swaps to Dante halfway through the game like like you can just do that. For the sake of context, Dante is exceptionally complex with three weapons, three guns, five styles mapped to the D-pad. You should be switching between on the fly, ideally. Just a lot of stuff going on that Nero doesn't. The kid has his own complexity, sure, but I think the skill floor and ceiling for Dante is just so much more expansive. So what happens is the player looks and feels like a dumbass right out of the gate, but they drip feed you the weapons over the course of the missions uh, to alleviate this, so it's not that bad. It's still jarring though, because you don't have the devil arm. Remember that knight we grabbed, the other things we did with it? You don't have that now. You have to play the game the way it was intended to be played, perhaps. Or otherwise, more troublingly, the way it was not intended or designed to be played. I'm ashamed to admit how much trouble controlling the guy gave me on my return to this game. Enemies I used to destroy with Nero started fucking me up, and I briefly thought, man, I, I better practice and come back with good footage. But it really just speaks to the situation, right? A newer player will likely go through this experience and might have a negative experience in either case, right? The player will likely decide they either dislike the first 10 with Nero, if they're a Dante guy, or dislike the last section if they want Nero back. Not necessarily, but the potential is there. And I don't want to undersell the experience here. The game is is really short, uh, and the higher difficulties aren't all that enticing with three repeated adventures with different characters in the special edition, but there's so much depth to the combat, you'll get your money's worth if you actually invest in learning it. I'm not joking when I say combo videos of this game are beautiful. Actual art. What the system allows is incredible, but for the casual gamer, aka like 90% of the people who actually bought the game, they'll probably feel trapped by their own dexterity limitations. Not to mention, for anyone not investing their precious time into becoming a god of the combat, you're just playing through all the Nero levels again, fighting nearly every boss you already fought on the way there. The generous reviewer says, well, you have a new character, it's a new experience, and the levels are a bit different, so it feels fresh. The cynical reviewer says, it's the same shit twice, 
this time I don't know what I'm doing and the levels are the same, but with gimmicks. I mean, I will give them credit, right? Dante sees that dice come down and just... Yeah, fuck you, game designers. Fuck you. The ending segment is probably the weakest. I'm unsurprised to say Dante fights the most unintuitive, dragged out, boring boss fight in the game. You literally can't change my mind. Uh, we hard swap to Nero who gets to do the dice game five fucking times and fight another boss again. This is content padding. I get that Capcom does this. I get it. Okay, I know they do this. Apparently people like this. But this is the third time now in the playthrough without even a change of scenery or anything. Cut the shit, please. And then Nero beat up the Pope. United to stay out of You know, I've heard people say it's fun, and yeah, it can be fun. I've also heard people say that the new Dante is a great character, and really, it's like my comment section. There's people who say, haha, funny video, man, good job. And other people who think I'm an insufferable prick, to which I say, I'm sure if I met this Dante in real life, he'd be just fine. But if you love this game, you gotta understand the negativity, right? You can see why, right? It doesn't matter who the franchise got handed over to, and it doesn't matter what their intentions were. The reality is, they tonally diverged from all four of the previous games, and then antagonized the fans for criticizing them. Not the million years. That's just bad business. So about the gameplay. Dante has three melee weapons at any given time and some guns I barely used. It's like, uh, I like that they map the weapons to the trigger buttons, so holding those produces the alternate weapon in combat. Pretty cool all around. The combat is mostly intact, though it's got this weird sharpness to it that I have no strong feelings about. I like the extended combo meter. It feels way easier to maintain a combo and get multiple S's, but the enemies are pretty predictable all around. The one thing that's uh, not my cup of tea is since you now have the devil and angel weapon at all times with easy access. Some enemies are immune to anything but damage from that type of weapon. So if you don't like one, tough shit. They changed Devil Trigger in this one. I'm not really sure why. It somehow feels incredibly strong and yet completely useless. Fair enough. There's doors you have to open with special weapons, which like, that's such a video game thing. Obviously nobody in the world put this shit here just for such an occasion as Dante coming along with his magical angel scythe to shred the fibers. It's contrived and unnecessary, but whatever, okay. There's also a lot of collectibles in the world that are pretty well hidden, but they don't change the gameplay much. Uh, you don't need a ton of health upgrades to beat normal mode anyway. I think the general gameplay loop sucks. You fight, and then you do a platforming section, then you fight, then you do a platforming section. The platforming, like the combat, has that kind of kindergarten Simon Says feeling built into it. You see a red mark and you use the demon whip. You see a blue ball, you use the angel whip, but watch out. Sometimes you have to alternate, but and it might trip you up if you can't differentiate between red and blue. These were excessively boring, but I am sure that people who love menial tasks would also love this. It's hard to remember the gameplay. What sticks out the most from my playthrough were all the douchey little things Dante said and the bizarre dialogue. So with gameplay officially discussed, Devil May Cry, Devil May Cry is a commercially and critically successful reboot of a franchise that was once a campy romp through gothic architecture places, but is now set in a world where demons run the world via propaganda akin to Fox News, uh, demon drug soda of all things, and mass public surveillance. I hope that the subtleties of this very nuanced setting aren't lost on the very pedant consumer base. Like, Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> this is the most pretentious thing I've seen in gaming. They fucking, they, they put, I don't know, demon words on the walls to, and shit to convey the situation so ham-fistedly, and yet I'm almost positive it's meant in earnest. Stupidity and obesity in the soda factory. So fucking nuanced. Ugh. Kill Dante? Fuck you, Dante? <laughs> Is this real? You can say whatever you want about the past games not being subtle. At least they didn't throw messages and themes in text format at the player. And Dante is supposed to be more relatable to the player. That's the line I've seen half the positive reviewers throw, right? More relatable. I'll give you that being an incredibly powerful badass is not relatable, but how the fuck is that the point of Devil May Cry? It's an escapist power trip. Let me have it. And anyway, I've never been lusted after by hordes of women opened the door stark naked, generally acted like a total fucking plank douche in public. Listen to this guy's delivery. You're my brother. What is that? Who talks like that? He mumbles his way through every scene. He's such an insufferable prick. Remember this? Fucking Dante's like stupid. It's like, there's like a fucking giant spider that comes oh, down and he's like, hey, 
looking hot. So instead, right, Dante sees a giant hideous slug thing that threatens to kill him and he doesn't care. He just cracks a joke and they swear at each other. It's so devoid of substance or, or dignity or anything. You want to pretend like this is marketed to a younger generation? Yeah, I guess if they like being fucking assholes. Cool. What a fun character trait. This game feels like a movie with the way it's written. Very cinematic moments, you know, it'd probably make a good Netflix special. Except, Virgil's a smart sociopath. Dante is everything I already said. Cat exists in relation to these two men and is not an individual. Good writing, guys. Mundus is a power-hungry evil boy. If you're gonna write a movie, you gotta choose between doing good characters or doing boring ones, right? The characters here are boring, no questions. Dante experiences character development and that's great, good stuff. But these other guys are basically cardboard. And now the inevitable thesis statement comment, breaking down why this game actually has brilliant writing. <laughs> Whatever, you can attack every other reviewer who said the same thing. It's just hard to sit through this game without laughing. Speaking of Mundus, there's some boss fights. A lot of them are literally just combo into dodge into combo, maybe jumping to another platform between. What sticks out in my head are the Bill O'Reilly, sorry, Bob Barbus fights and the giant fetus boss fight. This game does visual spectacle really well, so props for that. Bob Barbus is just fucking horrific, and his fight incorporates a lot of tense movement that really lights a fire under your ass. So yeah, aside from these stupid expository news reports sections, this boss fight was awesome. The baby was memorable because... I, I hate this baby. Hate it, a baby? I don't care for the visuals or the way they artistically approach the game, but it's clearly aimed at a more grungy, devil-may-care, disaffected audience. The game succeeds in what it's trying to do, and no one can take that away. I just don't care for how hard it tried to be edgy. At some point, you cross over from campy to mean-spirited, from extra to ham-fisted. Like, where do you even go from here? <laughs> I'm gonna say one bad thing, okay? Why didn't you let me play Dante sooner? This game is so goddamn cool. I'm gonna do something I don't usually do on my show and ask you to play this game because holy shit, guys. It's like the ideal DMC for your average consumer. You've got the whole story leading up till this game laid out for you. You've got all the characters that matter. You've got Nero back from four with a robotic arm and it does the most fucked up crazy things. You've seriously gotta try it. It breathes new life into this dude that I always found so boring. Don't get me wrong. Wrong. Still would rather play Dante, but alas. You've got V, who like, I'm not spoiling the plot, but his inclusion based on the events of this game either doesn't make a lick of sense or it was made deliberately nonsensical for the sake of drama later. But never mind that, he controls demons and reads poems. Romantic literature, specifically William Blake poems. Finally, my literature degree is reflected in the media I consume. Holy shit. But none of that matters to me because Dante is so fully realized. I used to think DMC4 Dante was perfect, but this game makes the old one look and feel obsolete. His devil arms are better than they've ever been. I was kind of disappointed going from three to four, having super cool, multicolored, multi-element devil arms to all gray, though different devil arms. This game though, you've got the fist weapon, only it's got boxing and capoeira modes, and it's so perfect, dude. I just, I hope this clip is doing it justice. Dante's sword has never been better, uh, even letting you finally air combo without swordmaster mode activated, the, the nunchucks bow staff combo, is my favorite. It's so rewarding to land a multi hit combo on a tough enemy or a whole pack, and all the old kung fu movie inspired attacks are inspiring to watch. It's consistently the most frenetic and destructive series of rods I've ever seen. Finally, that motorcycle. Okay, look, this is what I'm talking about. In Devil May Cry 3, Dante got an electric guitar weapon. Really cheesy, you know, clever but cool, you know? It fits his personality. This, this is that amped up to fucking 11. You can ride a motorcycle and grind up the demons with the wheels. What more do you want? So that's it. They've brought back fun, stylish, awe-inspiring weapons and I couldn't be happier with it. I briefly mentioned Nero and V. I'll say this much. I'm sure other people are gonna love them, but I was kind of sick of playing them by the time I got to Dante. I'll never really understand why Capcom thinks I care about its new ideas for a series they sold with this guy. I 
I don't know. Nero isn't bad at all. He just, uh, he doesn't mash dudes the way Dante does. V isn't bad either, but he's the only character who can use his gun, weapon, and melee weapon simultaneously. So I found myself mashing my thumb on two buttons the whole combat, and it hurts, dude. These thumbs are getting old. And that whole business is caused by the bizarre mission pacing, where time jumps all over the place and back and forth between characters. I think they should have just made three paths you play individually, but then I wouldn't have played the new characters. So, uh, that and with the way the plot is constructed, I can see why they did it. The character of the franchise is on full display here. Characters have great banter, uh, it's not too mean-spirited and frankly movie-esque. I feel like I'm playing a game, not playing a game that's playing at cinema. And so it comes off as way less pretentious, way more insular, way more celebratory of itself. Which is strange for a game with a weird, out-of-place Michael Jackson dance number, but hey, whatever. Dante's tried his hand at Shakespeare and Bruce Lee. Why not, huh? Some dude on Twitter said it best. The game's the best kind of trash, and I love it. And, you know, I've been hard on Eagoraptor in the videos. Uh, you know, he's been a real creative inspiration in life, and I've been harping on him, and I feel bad about it, but hey, for anyone who thought Dante was a one-note, too-cool character, he's characterized with at least two emotions. But seriously, they made it so that he's vulnerable. He has rough moments, and he gets his signature snark when he needs it. They did a good job turning what could be a piece of cardboard into a person. I will say, I think the levels lost a degree of personality. Half of the game is Grey City, and the other half is Red Hell. The levels have motifs, platforming, little things to do here and there, but they mostly feel like straight shots to the boss fights, which I at least appreciate. I didn't want to do the intrusive gyroblade sections and constant platforming in the reboot. I just wanted to have a fun character to do fun combos with, and this game let me do that for the most part, even if I got lost a couple times because of the lack of landmarks and personality in the environment. The environment seems set up to not impede the combat, though. DMC has had trouble with camera angles before, and it does happen in this game, but it never screwed me over like it has in the past. But then tons of combat areas are wide open anyway. If this were Dungeons and Dragons, it might be boring, you know? A, a mostly flat, uninteractable plane. But being able to consistently enact your gameplay is important and clearly a priority. This is also visible in the enemies. They bring back lots of old franchise familiars, but in general, the enemies exist to sometimes interrupt you if you're screwing around, or let you use the tools you have available to you in unique ways. But unlike the reboot, we'll never make a super specific approach the absolute ideal. I felt like I wasn't being forced to approach in one way or another, just allowed to play how I wanted, and it was beautiful. The bosses, on the other hand, were a bit of a mixed bag. A lot of them suffered from the same problem as the environment. They don't have a whole lot of personality. I remember the first time I saw DMC4's first boss and was like, holy shit, that guy's on fire and he's big. DMC5 has big bosses, cool bosses, really, really dangerous bosses, and scary, annoying bosses, but a lot of them are hard to remember, because a lot of them lack in character. Don't get me wrong, some of my greatest feelings of triumph in the game came from the bosses, of course, and they mostly picked up in the second half of the game. Speaking of which, Dante takes over for most of the end game, thankfully, and he's got a new extra bar above the Devil Trigger, which already let you do amazing shit, right? But this one turns you into a true demon, okay, and you basically should on everything around you, but on a very limited timer. With the time it takes to charge this up, it doesn't impact gameplay very significantly, but when you use it, it trashes absolutely everything. I'll leave it with this. I'm interested in where this series goes from here. It seems, given how this game plays out, that with every installation after 3, the company inches further away from Dante, who, by the way, is the face of the franchise, and is more and more interested in, frankly, more boring characters and their stories. In fact, it's already been stated that this game is the intended end of the Sons of Sparta saga. I don't know what can be done about it, I don't know what they're planning, and if the series ended here, I'd be content. Crazy weapons, crazy combos, crazy characters. That's Devil May Cry, and while they could just as easily do it again and again with a Dante analog who isn't afraid to pick up more than one weapon for fuck's sake, I'm sure it can be done. Just please, for the love of Dante, don't forget where you came from, Capcom. So in the spirit of Devil May Cry 5, V, and romantic poetry, I'll end this with my favorite, uh, disturbingly fitting piece from John Keats. To Devil May Cry. When I have fears that I may cease to be, before my pen has gleaned my teeming brain, before high-piled books in character hold like rich garners the full ripened grain, when I behold upon the night's starred face huge cloudy symbols of a high romance and think that I may never live to trace their shadows with the magic hand of chance, and when I feel 
fair creature of an hour, that I shall never look upon thee more, never have relish in the fairy power of unreflecting love. Then on the shore of the wide world I stand alone and think, till love and fame to nothingness do sink.